Welcome to Trionic 7, the YouTube channel for Saab enthusiasts. We're doing a bit of maintenance work today on my 2002 Saab 95 Arrow. And I've been doing some searching for a boost leak. And I thought it would be best to go ahead and replace all the vacuum lines, since some of them are quite old and crusty. You don't need many tools for this job. Uh, of course you need the hoses, this is about 3 meters, or might be about 10 feet in the US. I'm also going to use a knife, some side cutters, and also cable ties to make everything nice and snug in the end. First I'll remove some plastic covers. There we go. Also this plastic cover here. You can just pull it upwards and it will come loose. There are different strategies you can use when replacing the silicon hoses. What I will do now is just replace them one at a time. So remove the old one and then put the new one back in. This way you will not, not put the hoses in the wrong way. The first one we will be replacing, which has already been replaced in this car previously, is this hose from the turbo pipe down to the firewall. Fairly simple to get to, just go ahead and do the replacement. The next hose starts at the throttle body down here. You can see a thin black hose coming out. It's going to be hard to film this film because uh, black hoses don't show up very well on video. But if I zoom in here, you can see, you can see the connector. And we are already on the sec we are only on the second hose of this video, but I actually found the probable cause of the boost leak because this hose is not connected to anything. And I found a loose end on the other side. This is the other side of this hose. So we will not just be replacing this one, but we will also be reconnecting it. I should also point out that you can remove this brake booster hose from the air intake pipe very easily. You just push in this red ring and then you can pull the hose out. Like this. And then you'll have better access down to the vacuum hose. This is what an old rubber hose looks like. Crusty, hard, brittle, probably will fail on you. And if you bend it, you'll probably start seeing small cracks. Yuck! After taking the hose out, you can measure up a new hose from the blue silicon line. This new line has an inner diameter of 4 millimeters and an outer diameter of 8 millimeters, which we'll be using for this entire procedure. So measure up the same length and then put it back in. This is the end on the throttle body, and this is the other side. I should also point out that this car is a 2002, and if your car is newer than 04, you might have some small changes in how these uh, hoses go. But if you do one hose at a time, you should have no issues figuring everything out. For the next part, I'll be moving the throttle body pipe a little bit to make it easier to access. Just a normal screwdriver. You loosen this hose clamp here and then lift the pipe upwards. Like so. The next hose is very short and also a little hard to see, especially on video. And you're better off just trying to pull it out without having to look at it. It's easy to see with the blue hose attached. So here's the upper part or the rearmost part of this hose and then it goes down to this part here. There's a barbed uh, a little barb on the nipple so it clamps onto the hose basically. You will see it when you have it removed and put some light on it. Don't worry about it. It's just very hard to show on video. I'll just zoom out so you can see the approximate location. So this third short hose goes from close to the throttle body down to what looks like the fuel rail. 
The next hose is a bit of a pain because it goes to the coolant bypass valve. I did remove the cable harness to the side just to make it uh, show up on video. The coolant valve is the round thing here. From the top there's a vacuum line going down to the firewall. And this hose is about uh, 15 to 20 centimeters long. For more information on how to remove the cable harness here, uh, check out my other video uh, on changing the coolant bypass valve. Here you see the new vacuum line for the coolant bypass valve. And it's almost impossible to show, but you can actually feel your way down to the nipple again. And you'll have a nice silicone hose also for the coolant bypass valve. Okay, so again, I have lifted a wire harness plug up so you can see the cables and, and the vacuum lines more clearly. Uh, but the next hose is going to be here. So this vacuum line, just gently pull it away. And the other side goes to a T joint. And apparently this hose was in such bad condition that I'll need to use my knife to remove all of it. So be very careful and just cut it away slowly. And there it goes. So now you can see the T connector. And this is the length of the hose going into the T-clamp. Okay, first hose to the T-clamp is installed. The next one is really short. So you just shank it. It's a really short hose here. The third and the last hose that is connected to the T-clamp is this thing with the check valve on it. Nice new silicon hoses, and we put it back in. It will be impossible for me to show where this lower end goes down to the firewall. But if you feel down with your hand, and it's gonna be tight, you will feel a small nipple where you slide it onto. And this check valve should be the red side upwards. And I think it means that air is gonna flow into the T-clamp from below. The shortest cable, or sh shortest hose, goes down to the same place where we did the third cable, the really short one. Uh, the top nipple goes to the T-clamp and then down to the firewall and down to the electric valve thing here. And now we're done. That was the last vacuum line. Be sure to put the throttle hose back on and the brake booster back in and uh, check that all the lines go nicely. There's no no problems with them, they're not tugging on anything and just put everything back together. There are still some things that you can do if you want to change more of the lines. For instance, uh, this line that goes with the PCV system and the white check valve. I didn't replace it today. I might be doing it later and uh, might also replace the actual check valve itself in, uh, to something more durable, like a metal check valve. Because these ones often break. And I actually have quite a bit of hose left after this procedure. Granted, the long hose from the throttle, um, the turbo pipe, over to the firewall, that was already replaced. So, But I still have quite a bit of length left, so I might be doing the check valve and stuff later on. Also, what you could do, especially if you have boost problems, is to check uh, the two blue check valves that are here under the mass airflow sensor. Because that's supposed to be, if I'm not mistaken, the EVAP system. So you could check those hoses too. But there you will need a thicker hose because 4 millimeters will not cut it there. All in all, I would say this is quite an easy operation if you have small hands. The trickiest part is indeed to get down behind these cables and the firewall. But if you want to make it easy for you, just go to my coolant bypass valve uh, video clip. I'll put a link down in the description to see how we can get better access to the to the valves and those lines down there. But really, something that every sub 95 user should do if they want to have uh, a nice leakage-free car. So, time-wise, I would say 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how cautious you are and and how much you need to fumble down at the firewall. 
and you also need to basically lie down in your stomach over the entire engine just to get inside there. I can also report success with a boost leakage before this fixed. This morning I tested the boost with my Android app and my OBD2 scanner and the car could only give me 0.7 bars of boost pressure. Now with a loose hose and back on the right position I could actually get up to 1.1 bar and a noticeable difference in engine power on high revs. So uh, this was definitely worth it in my opinion. Again, big thanks to Eric from the Saab community in Linköping in Sweden for giving me this hose for free. And thank you for watching this video from Trionic 7, the YouTube channel for Saab enthusiasts. If you have any questions, just leave them down in the comment box. You can also follow us on social media, Google+, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit and Instagram. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.